Well, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful day for a neighbor. Won't you be mine? Won't you be mine? How many of you remember Mr. Rob, Mr. Rogers? Let's say Mr. Roberts. Mr. Rogers. Annabelle gave me these great little um, candles here, which I love. And uh, by the way, there's a new conservative app called Parler. P-A-R-L-E-R. -E I just signed up with it. And... Uh, it's nice to be able to just go someplace and not always be harassed. But um, just wanted to let you know. But anyway, so, so I'm writing a book, and I've got my two computers here. Uh, can you see that? Oh, wait a second, darn it. This one here is constantly going out on me. Anyway, there's another one. And um, the two computers, I'm working on the book, and I need you guys to help me with the title. So you can go to lancewallnow.com, it's W-A-L-L-N-A-U, dot com, forward slash, book title. I want you to pick the title for the next one, because there's a lot of titles. And, you know, there's just so many people talking about entitlement, that I figured you and I should participate in the debate. So, that's a randomly stupid thing to say. Okay, so, I have uh, something I do want to show you, though, which is pretty powerful. And um, it's a revelation I got. I'm looking around here because in Texas, in my neighborhood, there are skunks. I was out walking and I ran into a skunk and then Annabelle was making fun of me. Oh, Lance, you're so, you know, paranoid. So I was sitting here the other night and a skunk came up and was actually hanging around the door Annabelle came out through a minute earlier going, hey, you know, I was saying something. I thought, I, sh I sure hope she doesn't open the door and the skunk gets in. Now, don't be sending me prophetic words about what it means. There's skunks all over this part of Texas. So, I mean, maybe a prophetic word, but it's not like an unusual thing. Uh, so, if I look a little distracted, it's because I just realized that it happened last night. My wife says she thinks the skunk likes me because I keep running into it. It's like Pepe Le Pew. And she says, it's kind of, it's because you're friendly. It's like, ugh, whatever. Okay, so, but I have a revelation I want to give you. And, and this is so powerful. I was doing a Kenneth Copeland social media call uh, on Skype. And it was with um, uh, my friend who has Gospel Radio TV, or it's Revival Radio TV. And I was just reading to him. I said, this is where we're at right now, just, just so you can catch this. Powerful revelation coming right at you here. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? Now, if I put my finger over here, is it in the right place? Wait a second, let me put it over here. There we go. Okay, now send me some thumbs up. Thumbs up, thumbs up, and hearts. Thumbs up, and hearts. Come on, can you do it? Whoa, there we go. Is it in the right place? Woo, there we go. It's the energizer. Whoa, whoa, there it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. Yay! Okay, all right. Now, um, Mark... Uh, Here's where it is in the Bible. It's a beautiful day. So, um, Jesus is crossing over to the other side. And as he's crossing over to the other side of the lake, it says here in chapter 4, verse 37, a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling up, meaning it's starting to sink. And he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. You talk about a heavy sleeper. Oh, my gosh. Jesus is sleeping through a storm, and they're tossing, and there's water got to be flying all over the place, and he's just, you know, he's, he's had some very peaceful sleep. And they awoke him. Now, this is all very prophetic about the awakening. We're all praying for great awakening. Watch how this works. There on the ship, he says, let's go to the other side, verse 35. Let us go to the other side. Remember Kim Clement used to prophesy and rap, let us go to the other side where, you know, something's calling me, go to the other side. So anyway, so let us go to the other side. He goes to sleep. They are freaking out. And uh, they awoke him and said, Teacher, don't you care that we're drowning? It's a great confession, great, great faith confession to give the Messiah. What's even worse is they're supposed to be like the bodyguards. You got like 12 men that are supposed to be with the Messiah, and they're kind of like his crew, and they're screaming. So, uh, then he arose, now catch this, he arose and rebuked the wind, 
and said to the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Here's, here's, here's the point. One, it requires one anointing or exercise of authority to speak to the cause of the storm. And there's another that speaks to the condition the storm has created. So you take the whole race issue right now. Um, and I'm going up directly into the, the George Floyd thing and everything that's happening. And the race issue, what the Democrats knew was that Trump had a, a startlingly high favorability rating with African Americans. Remember, he basically came to them and said, what the hell have you got to lose? The Democrats treat you like crap. And it's true. Democrats taken for granted. And, um, but there was a high percentage of votes. You know, you got Candace Owens, you got a lot of the Blexit thing going on. And they can't afford, if they lose like, um, uh, if there's like a 10% or 12% shift, that could throw off their whole election. And I promise you, they, they have to go to the race issue. And they did it with, you know, they did it, um, you know, in 2014 and 15. They're going to do it now. And it's not that there isn't, you know, things that are wrong with the police department. But the whole reaction of the police department is statistically irrational. The whole defunding, um, because the number of incidents regarding um, white on black killings is remarkably low. I'm talking like around, I think, 15 incidents. There's 540,000 documented accounts of black on white crime. But, you, you know, average out for the population, it's still high. But the, the fact that this incident was the, done the way it was, it was the perfect uh, tinderbox moment. But, you know, we got organizations that are like um, these activist groups. They got $100 million that's sitting on. They got to do something. So they're ready and they're looking. So when the incident happens, it gets disproportionately exploded. People aren't looking rationally because the emotions get stirred. That's the water the ocean, the storm. So you have to be really kind of sympathetic, empathetic, and wise in speaking of the storm. And here's part of the reason why. The, um, the wind, I believe, is casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We'll probably have to do another broadcast and talk about what's the data, what's the empirical evidence for uh, the accusation that the police are hunting people, because it isn't true. We got to go to the data. You know, the left is always wanting to be scientific when it's when when it's to their advantage to you know to uh, make a point, and then they're unscientific when they want to manipulate. So let's just go to the data. We'll go to the data, I and mean, the numbers are there for everybody to see. But that's not the point. See, there's a history of trauma that can be in a community. Uh, for instance, I was once in Kelowna, British Columbia, and I was ministering, and as I was ministering. I was, a lady was on the stage, and I used to do this a lot, and I'm getting rusty because I'm not doing it as much, but I'll, I'll have to figure out how to do it more. I used to call people out in the audience, have them come up, and we would just do something prophetically and heal deliverance, and I used to do it a lot back then. And a lady came up, and she had experienced domestic abuse from her husband. And so I wanted to stand in the place, which is a very powerful thing, stand in the place of the men who have the, the, the man who betrayed her, who married her, and then beat her. Now, I kid you not, this happened in front of an audience. As I am standing there, asking her to forgive me as I represent the sins of what has happened in the past, a handprint in red appears on her cheek. I mean, boom. Literally, the fingers on the cheek, it was like the outline of a hand showed up. I said, what's that? Is there something wrong? And she said, he used to slap me. Her own body had the memory of the trauma as she was getting delivered. I am convinced that the, uh, the immensity, the absolute uh, unbearable immensity of the issue of slavery can have a residual generational trauma that can be carried in in the mystery of the um, physiology, the DNA from generation to generation. Anyone of anyone that's ever dealt with ministry at all knows about generational curses and, and the necessity of breaking them. So if you have parents that were heavily involved with the occult or heavily involved with something, it's helpful. Um, 
Some of you right now, in the name of Jesus, you've got migraines and you've got headaches. And I'm going to tell you, and you have, and you have um, uh, problems sleeping. If your parents were involved in the occult, and sometimes we don't even know, but if you know for a fact that your mother or your father was into like palm reading, astrology, something like that, just go to the Lord and repent of the sin in the bloodline of opening the door to this thing. My dad was a 32nd degree Mason. And many times I ran into situations where I really felt that that Masonic curse had to be hit in the blood of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And I got this word about headaches for people tonight. And I'm telling you right now, in the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you. Go ahead and, and just ask the Lord to forgive you and your bloodline for any defilement with the occult, especially if you know it's true, seances and such. And Father, I thank you that there's healing testimonies tonight. I command this uh, headache to cease and, to, and the migraines to end and that the cleansing is coming right now in Jesus' name. So, I believe that there's this trauma. So, speaking to the waves means that you may not believe because you're looking at empirical data or something regarding uh, the police. But if somebody is caught up in the, the whole community effect, it reinforces, in a sense, it activates, I believe, a level of trauma. And so, you have to speak peace to the waves, but we're going to have to also speak truth to the high things that are exalting themselves against knowledge, against against uh, what is empirically provable, and that's the only way you could do it. You could, you have to be dealing with the lies that the enemy says, that traumatize, that activate trauma, and then you have to speak peace to those that are in the trauma. You can't be rebuking the person the trauma, and you can't be speaking peace to a demon. Principality. Does that make sense? But here's the part I want you to see. I had, as progressive revelation happens, I have, you guys enjoying this? I mean, share, share this with your friends. Just share it with them. And don't forget, lancewallon.com forward slash book title. I need you to help me get a book, book title. But this is mind-blowing. Let me show you something right now that is just, just flip my switch. And I just got it doing this Kenneth Copeland um, social media call an hour ago. And when they came to the other side, after the storm had ceased, Jesus spoke peace again to what was agitated, the water, and rebuked the origin, which was the, the wind. Now, when they came to the other side of the country, and when he had come out of the boat immediately, there met him exceedingly fierce. Let me see if I can show this to you. Now, is this, okay, it's, sometimes it flips the words around. And there met him exceedingly fierce. Um, out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. This is an unclean spirit. And he was dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains. But well, that's some powerful spirit, break the chains. Because he had often been bound with shackles and chains. And... The chains had been pulled apart by him, the shackles broken in pieces. Neither could anyone tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. What a terrible, tormented life. And when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. This is fascinating. Notice, the storm arose. The storm came to Jesus in a strange way. This conflict in the earth is coming to God, the only one who can resolve the storm. It, the storms are drawn to you. Think about that. This demonized person was drawn to Jesus. This storm and that strong demon person are both connected. Don't read them as two separate incidents. They're both tied. Got it? What have I to do with you, the Son of the Most High God? Um, I, I dare you that you do not torment me. For he had said to him, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. He was already saying, come out. And then he asked him, Cisco's goes to tell you, you might have to make your confession more than once. Well, I only say it once. Well, you're not really, then you're more powerful than Jesus. Jesus had to say it over and over until it happened. Then he asked him, what is your name? And the man answered, Legion, for we're many. And he begged him earnestly, now watch this, that he would not send them out of the country. 
interesting, not send him out of the country. The demons begged him that they wouldn't be sent out of the territory. This was my aha tonight. Where you see statues coming down, where you see lawlessness stalking the streets, what you're looking at is territorial manifestations of strongholds that are stronger than the witness of Christians and the anointing in those areas. I'm just, I'm just saying this, let's think about it, that those demons did not want to leave their territory. That means they were territorial spirits in a person. And so where you see the anarchy, you're looking at the manifestation of powers of the heavens coming down and linking up with people on the earth. And the two are linked up and manifesting. And then you look at these people, like President Trump put out a list. He's put out a list on list on list of these people that, that the FBI is after. My friend, they could all fit the bill of this guy who was in the tombs. You look at a bunch of them, it's like, oh my God. These aren't people that you're gonna reason with. And something, there's a thought that has them. They don't have thoughts, thoughts are having them. So Jesus, of course, gives the guy, gives the demons permission to go into the swine, and then the swine go down the hill. And who knows what happened to those demons after that. But you got what I'm saying? This is important. This is great you teaching. You got to get the context of this. You got to get the context. I love it. Rush is talking. So, I should show you. You want to see that? You want to see what I'm watching? So, the, uh, but here's the thought I want you to catch. So, they pulled down Ulysses S. Grant uh, yesterday. Now, it's really weird that you would take down the Northern Army because the North was actually the ones that uh, liberated the South from slavery, and you could argue, well, that was an original intent, yeah, but that ended up being the intent. God had one, one way of getting them in, but when they got there, they realized that this was a major issue. Lincoln grew in his awareness of it, that he had to deal with that specifically. And um, Grant shattered with Union troops all the organization of the KKK where he could find it. When the liberal Republicans wanted him to relax a bit on his reforms, he overturned them and said, we're going to have radical reforms while I'm president. And so to pull down Grant's statue doesn't speak. Uh, and then they'd say, well, I, he had a slave somewhere. The, the point is that the spirit that is at work is territorial, A. It's working on um, generational issues and trauma and it is misrepresenting truth so that people are hearing a lie and believing it's true. It's then working a lot with people that have the most demons and um, the anarchists, and they're coming out in the territories where the mayors are weak, the city councils are weak, and where they're under the control of these spirits because those spirits just don't stick in one area. They'll hover over the They'll go into the arts, they'll go into law, they'll go into business. In other words, a principality will corrupt every mountain. Does that make sense? So we're looking at a territorial phenomenon in the United States. And that means territorial spirits are what we're dealing with right now. So territorial spirits means the greater the unity of the body of Christ in a territory, the more authority the church has. Our victory, our strength, our secret weapon is the power of agreement. And sometimes we got to know what's happening. So Jesus was speaking and nothing, the demon wasn't coming out. So he went one level further. He said, tell me your name. He got more information and interrogated. And so we're now interrogating the situation to find out what's at work and their territorial spirits working off of trauma with history. And you speak um, empathetically to the person who's traumatized. You speak the truth prophetically um, in the um, direction of the wind that's stirring it up. And then we're going to start to see people that are going to be getting free. Now, U.S. Grant pulled down. That's all about tearing up American history. The nature of this spirit that's working now, believe it or not, this is fascinating, is a religious spirit. That's why you see Pelosi and Schumer and all those guys kneeling. They have no idea what they're doing. Taking a knee means you're bowing to the new prince. And this is a new religious movement. That's why President Obama, you might have missed this, 
yesterday, he went on uh, record with the Democratic Party on television and media talking to Biden. He really wasn't talking. It was Obama talking. And he said he's so proud of what he's seeing happen in the youth. It's a new great awakening. He literally called it a great awakening. When he says it's a great awakening and it's looting and destruction and the burning of the flag and the overturning of America, it literally means it's a fake awakening. It's a fake awakening, not a great awakening, and it's a religious spirit we're dealing with. Why do we know it? Because we've met it before. It's the spirit of the Pharisees. The spirit of the Pharisees would find reasons to disqualify you from being um, part of the community. Adulterous gets caught, letter of the law. They're legalistic. Pharisees are legalistic. You had one thing you did wrong. You had one tweet you did wrong. You had one joke you shouldn't have told 10 years ago. And so the spirit of a Pharisee searches diligently to find the sin. And then it points out the sin, shames the sinner, and brings no absolution or cleansing, just punishment. It's kind of almost like uh, Muslim fundamentalism is the same right now as left-wing fundamentalism. It's a fundamentalist religious spirit. But the Pharisees is what the apostles had to deal with. So maybe we're moving into a classic confrontation of a religious spirit and an apostolic spirit. Interesting, huh? But it's religion. It's a religious battle. This isn't a political battle. This is a culture war, not a political war. And all these years I've been talking about the church and the seven mountains and, you know, some people, you know, yeah, yeah. And other people, well, what's that? But it's basically that the church was called to take the high places in seven areas. And I warned if we didn't do it, the enemy was going to take those gates and weaponize them against us. When God gives you authority in your family or authority in your finances or authority in a job or authority in a, in a territory and you refuse to step up into the space God gave you, the devil will come in and he will exercise counterfeit authority. And counterfeit authority is called witchcraft. Counterfeit authority is the manifestation of intimidation manipulation and control it will dominate you it will intimidate you it will manipulate you and this is what everybody's doing right now you got a bunch of pastors that are like and they're trying to show solidarity they're trying to show that they're they're woke and they're actually it's really bad because they're the portal of a, of a false awakening and a false religion but they're weak so pray for them Pray for the pray for Waffle House because they're all waffling, and uh, so the oh yeah, and then and then today the new one was John Wayne. Oh my God, this is like taking that beautiful. They got they got this um, statue and, and I can't believe they did it. But this is territorial spirits. They get into city councils, they get into the activists, and the activists get into the city council, and the people. I'm telling you, most people are intimidated and dominated and manipulated. Actually. Most people respond to intimidation and manipulation and domination. And that's why when Elijah came along and confronted Jezebel and the false prophets, and the false prophets are media. You gotta get this. False prophets are media. False political leaders are false apostles. They're government. False prophets are the communicators. They're the media. And the uh, professors who trained the rabble that is now manifesting they're the false teachers, apostle, prophets, teachers, and they line up in order to create a harvest. So, does it make sense to you? Yes, yes, no, maybe so. Share this because I'm going to go up the air. I'm going too long. I'm going too long, but I'm going to give you a rush. I'm not going to even give you that powerful rush soundbite, which is so important. A 16-year-old called him, and I want you to hear what he said to the 16-year-old. He's so, he changes his tone when he talks to young people. so beautiful. Anyway, John Wayne's coming down. John Wayne is like, is like this marshal in the, um, in the airport. Just a beautiful, I mean, even look at the statue. It was just like one of those stand-up, good guy policemen, like one of the good guys. Standing there, a symbol of, of good law enforcement, protecting people. Well, they had to take it down. It's imbecilic to take down an authority image that could stand for good authority. So you have a bad experience with a father. What are we going to do? Take down all the father's pictures in everyone's house? What kind of lunacy is that? Had a bad experience with marriage, so we're going to start torching every wedding photograph? 
my God. So anyway, <clears throat> today it's John Wayne. They're going to they're, they're rename the John Wayne. But this is where the principalities are. Like there's a spirit hovering over Fort Worth there. There's a spirit hovering over. Where is it? It can't be Orange County. John Wayne. Is that where that is? It's hard to believe. But they're going to take down John Wayne. What the heck did John Wayne do? My God, they're taking down. I'll tell you how hypocritical this is. <clears throat> no, I, I just guess they didn't like the movie True Grit. I liked it. Maybe they didn't like it. Maybe the people in California don't like John Wayne. It's because he was a conservative. You got one conservative actor. I guess Charlton Heston's next. Um, the, uh, uh, where was I going with this? Let's see, we got, we got Grant coming down. We got John Wayne. It was something. It was really important. Go to lancewalnut.com forward slash book title. Give me your favorite title. I want you to give me a title for my next book. <clears throat> I should do books more often. Lord knows. When I read a chapter here, that's 30 pages too much. I don't know what's wrong with me. I just do data dumps. And it's like, why the heck? I'm not, I'm not going to use all this, but I write it anyway. Maybe I'll give it to you. You guys want to get all my unused pages? So, um... Oh, I know what it was going to Thank you, Jesus. The hypocrites. The hippo critters of the swamp. If you really want to rename something because of its tainted legacy, its offense to you and your history, here's where you got to go. You ready for this one? I want you guys to research this one. This will drive liberals crazy. They're not even liberals. Leftists crazy. Yale. There was it the the Duke of Yale that helped to found Yale was an avid slave merchant. When you go to the prestige degrees, Duke, Yale, um, and the other schools, we got to find what they are. I heard like five of them recently. Oh man, well, there's one. Up, there's another one up in the up in the Northeast. I say we have to change the name. We have to change the name. Start there. Don't start with John Wayne because he didn't like his um, relationship with Ronald Reagan. Don't start with W.V. Grant, or W.V. Grant, he's an evangelist, Ulysses S. Grant, because um, you found one sin in his life. I want you to go to the conspicuous ones, the top five prestige universities. Let me tell you something. They'll never do it. The swine will never do it. You know why? Because now you're touching what has value to them. They don't mind tearing down what has value to you. But you start talking about being righteously congruent with what has value to them, they ain't touching it. That little piece of sheepskin and the prestige of that Yale name is not coming off. I don't care if that man was the son of Beelzebub. It's staying there. But let's get all of them. Let's get all of the great prestige universities, shall we? I know Harvard can't be that because he was a Christian. Wasn't he John Harvard? Okay, so, but I'm going to keep coming back to that point because I think that one's going to be a sticking point with the, the bad actors. All right, now I want you to watch this. I, I'm, I'm so sorry I'm going off here. I, you guys are going to forgive me for this. Do you, want to, do you want to see this for a second? I'm going to show you something powerful. Everything I'm doing right now is really worthwhile. Everything. I was going to do a uh, firewall broadcast, but we had to cancel it this week. So I'm giving you all the best TV material right now. Now, here we go. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Come on, come on, come on. Watch this. All right, Rush is talking to this 16-year-old, and I'm keeping an eye out for that skunk. I want you to really understand what I'm saying. Because I think a lot of people came, and you're 16, and you... Um, uh, you're, you're, you don't have the same historical context as somebody who's 56 or 66. Somebody 56 or 66, their view of American politics is that Republicans and Democrats are constantly at war. Yep, this is what Christians are thinking. Politics. Oh, Lance, it's all politics. And uh, at the end Man, of every we're, election, we're. they put it all aside and they come together, what have you, and we move on. And then some years the Democrats win and some years the Republicans win. Your question indicates you know that's not the set What's of the question? Will Democrats America stop America? tearing you America apart if Biden? In other words, get rid of Trump. Oh, what is all and this? the short 
Listen to this. This is so important because Christians need to know this. Do not look at what they're doing as tearing up the country. They look at it as fixing it. The Democrats, that, 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 now, this is not true of Democrats of 30 years ago, Cabin. It's not true of Democrats 20 years ago. The Democrat Party today is not the Democrat Party of your dad and mom. The Democrat Party today has finally been taken over by Marxist left-wing radicals who despise capitalism and free economic markets and everything that goes along with capitalism. And so to them, the country as it is, was founded as evil, was founded as unfair, was founded as this? racist and bigoted. There's and the wind uh, that's causing the so storm. They look at what they're doing is not destroying anything other than the people who built the country. They are destroying what they think the American way of life was, white supremacy, white privilege, they look at what they're doing as you guys got that? tearing something down to fix it and stop. So, I mean, I'll, I'm going to pick this up tomorrow. I, I, I want you to hear the whole answer. They look at what they're doing as fixing the country. That's why Obama can say it's a great awakening. Tear the whole thing down. Roof to rafter. Rebuild it and make it right. Um... Okay, you understand that? That's why you're hearing, here's what the devil's saying. Oh, the Trump's so divisive. Trump, if we just got rid of Trump, so tired of this, all oh, this Russia, Russia. Why can't we have just somebody of a different disposition? See, they totally don't get it. This is like somebody's trying to break into your house and you're, and you're thinking the cop who is guarding your front door is not doing it as um, politely as you would. My friend, I don't want to see. Well, well, we'll have to just, I don't want to go down that road. But as long as Donald Trump is there. See, I, I've, my main concern is that the church has less than 100 days to get its act together. I'm not sure the leaders who aren't speaking up are suddenly going to find their voice because they think they're going to rationalize why they're doing what they're doing. So they haven't spoken before, but I'm going to speak now. But I do think that we can mobilize in a unique way. But for that to happen, we have to understand that this isn't an election. This is a cultural revolution that has been funded and executed by very powerful and intelligent organi organized entities. And that the Pelosi's and Schumer's and those guys, they brought themselves under the influence of something. The Bible talks about, the Apostle Paul says, that there is a spirit in the courts of pharaohs and Moses faced it and Aaron faced it and it's a spirit of Jannies and Jambres is what, it, is what it's called and you won't find it in the Bible but it's quoted in the New Testament and it's the oral tradition of the Jews Jannies and Jambres were the court magicians that exercised occultic influence on Pharaoh's throne so the deliverer the anointed has to go into the political arena and break the occult bondage that is casting its influence and diminishing and contradicting the word of the Lord. This is a rather interesting thing here. But the main thing is, in that chapter where Paul writes this epistle, he says, I believe it's to Timothy, he says that these people are word jugglers in the Greek. It means they're manipulators like media. Manipulators of words. You ever watch these guys there that are super on the left? They, they got their talking points. They know how to pivot. They got the same ones always talking. It's kind of a glass, kind of oily, kind of a feature to them. And they just go to their talking points. And like Tucker Carlson goes, oh, so you're not going to answer my question. But as Jennings and Jambres withstood Moses, so these will withstand the truth. But their folly will be made open to all. We have to claim that promise now, that the folly will be made open to all that everyone's going to see what's really going on, that the ax is laid to the root of the tree and that the fruit of the anarchy is going to be revealed by the fruit of the belief system and that the American people will have an Elijah moment where the witchcraft spell, the false prophets, is broken off them and Jezebel's intimidation, manipulation, domination is broken and that Elijah's spirit's going to be able to do 
a major um, deliverance in a sense in the nation. Now, Paul goes on to say they are deceiving others and they themselves are deceived. And I believe as their Trump derangement set in, Trump isn't a normal person. Trump's actually anointed um, to, be, to be the ruler. I can't say that every president was ever called in that way because we haven't always been in what's called a fourth turning, a crucible. Crucible was in Civil War. We needed a Lincoln or we would have driven a fallen apart. Uh, we needed a Washington or we never would have formed. I would say as, as um, screwed up as FDR was, um, that God in his grace provided a president who was able to partner with Churchill and see the, the civilizational impact of what Hitler was doing and saw the United States through um, that war. I would say that he was raised up by the Lord, even though there's a lot of mischief he did. And I would also say that uh, Trump, as a Cyrus, is at that fourth crucible. We're there now, at the fourth turning. And uh, I think those people that have been working to destroy him have actually been screwing around with a boomerang anointing, which means when you touch what God's anointed, it has a consequence, and the consequence is it causes greater derangement. And I believe when I look at Schumer and Pelosi, I, don't, I see the shell, like I see Biden as a shell. I don't think these people are capable of seeing what they're doing. I think they think they're, they're doing the right thing, and I think that they've given themselves over to deceiving and being deceived. Lying with Russia, lying with Trump, lying with everything for political purposes. And I think that they've, they've so fought with the Lord. Remember what the Apostle Paul said, uh, what the Lord said to Paul when he, when he confronted him and whacked him and knocked him off of his horse. The Lord said, is it not hard for you to kick against the pricks? The pricks were a goad, a sharp stick that herdsmen would use to move animals along. And if you're kicking against a sharp object, who's getting hurt? And so the more that these people have, have, have attacked what God has anointed, the more of a judgment comes in the form of a deeper deception. And the Bible does say this, that God's judgment is to give people over to a spirit of deception so that they believe a lie. You're checking out, Paul said it, that God's judgment is that they would believe a lie. Now, we're supposed to be, uh, Christians are sitting there praying for a great awakening. They're nervous. Oh, what about Trump? Praying for Trump. Yes, we'll keep on, keep on praying for him. But what we need to pray for is that the root will be exposed, the belief systems, the organization, that the essential truth of what's working to destroy America will be revealed because we need the spirit of Elijah to come and confront the lie because the people of God, Christians included, sorry to say, they're halting between two opinions. This was the problem with Israel. Well, I don't think Trump should be there. Well, I think he speaks a little well. I wish he would tweet a little differently. Don't you think he would do? I mean, I listen to these sanctimonious Sadducees that are constantly doing critiques on Trump. They're illiterate on economics. They're illiterate on the Middle East. They're illiterate on foreign policy. They're illiterate on the cases that Trump has advanced on his work for justice reform that Obama and Clinton and Biden never did. Trump did it for the African-American community. What Biden and Clinton, uh, Biden and Obama never did, Trump did for the African-American community in, in uh, criminal reform, and he did it for them in economic uh, employment. And he also did it in enterprise zones to invest in the cities. And because Trump isn't a racist, Trump is a winner. And to him, he doesn't want to see white people win. He wants to see America win. You get that, and you know that, unless you believe a lie. If you believe a lie, you're under the influence of a deceiving spirit. So the battle isn't even natural. The battle is spiritual. But Trump, you know, look, Don King, Mike Tyson, my God, Dennis Rodman was the go-between for his meeting with Kim Jong-un. Dennis Flippin' Rodman? Are you kidding me? What do you think he is, a white nationalist? Anyway. Trump, everybody knows in Manhattan, Trump doesn't have a, a uh, racist bone in his body because he sees people based on their achievements. And he has, you know, he's got his own prejudice. He doesn't like people that waffle, and he doesn't like people that lose. All right, 
I don't mind that. I like that in a pilot and a doctor or someone managing my portfolio. There's certain eccentricities I enjoy. I want somebody like that who's fighting the devil. So, you all get this? All right, do me a favor. I'm going to move my finger over here, and if you're going to go to that page, that says lancewilmer.com forward slash book title. Then send the love over here. Come on, come on, people. Whoa, there we go. I got 5, 10, 15. I got 20. Just you know, press those hearts. Hit those thumbs up, hearts, thumbs up. There we go. There we go. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah. There we go. Hallelujah and a half. All right, send your comments here. Share this with your friends. We've had a lot of revelations tonight. We understand what's going on. Territorial spirits, generational trauma. Speak to the people. Speak to the ideas. Two different conversations. Um, we got uh, a little bit of rush there on why the Democrats are doing it, because they think they're helping. And uh, many other bonus points. I look forward to seeing you guys later. And I think so far... We've had no skunks arrive. Okay, I'm going to go and say hi to Annabelle. God bless you. If you like this video, let's see if my editing team can follow where my finger goes. Like it here. And subscribe so you get future broadcasts.